Hello everyone, Chop here from Polymachine. In our last tutorial, we made a classic ArcVis interior scene by using Quixel Bridge and V-Ray Next. You'll find a link to that in the description. This time we're going to be making this atmospheric museum type interior but with Corona. The Corona renderer has quickly become a favorite among ArcVis artists because of its powerful features combined with a very streamlined workflow. And in this video we'll be looking at how Quixel Bridge and Megascans can be seamlessly integrated into a Corona-based pipeline. Just like last time, our scene has super basic geometry, a grand total of 9 simple objects. But we're obviously missing a focal point, so let's go and see what the Megascans library has to offer. Now, instead of browsing the Megascans website, I'm going to be using Quixel Bridge, which gives me a better and faster experience along with all the integrations that it offers. But first, I'll make sure that my Megascans live link is on and set up properly, and then we'll open up the bridge. Recently, Quixel added something not commonly found in stock repositories. If you type in Roman in the search bar, you're going to be presented with a whole new set of assets from ancient Rome, which is pretty awesome if you ask me. Uh, to filter the results a bit more, I'm going to type in 3D in the search bar, and now I should have a good overview of all the 3D Roman assets in the library. I love the look of these statues, so let's try and use that for our scene. After quickly making sure our export settings are correct, we just hit the export button and a statue will appear in our scene. Let's just quickly put this into its proper position in the scene just to check if everything is fine. And after that, we'll skip to the part where we import two more statues using this exact same method and adjust their positions a bit. There we go, that's looking great. To get started, let's apply a dark gray material to everything in our scene using Corona's material override function. Since our scene is mostly concrete, this will give us a better approximation of how the light's gonna bounce around in our scene. We'll also export all the statues to Corona proxies by right-clicking and choosing Corona Proxy Exporter. Since these statues have a lot of polygons, uh, this will give us much faster autosave times and also enable us to manipulate our scene a lot more quickly. There, now that that's done, we can just hide them and get started on creating the lights for our scene. Once again, we're going to be using a super simple light setup for this scene, so we'll just add a Corona Sun. We'll also add a default Corona Sky, adjust the sun's position a bit, and open up a render preview to see what we have so far. And hopefully, we're going to be getting some nice shadows falling down from the beams and the ceiling. We're going to be using Corona's interactive rendering mode for this, which is a great way to quickly preview any changes you're making to your scene. Okay. This is starting to look nice, but let's quickly make a few adjustments. First of all, let's adjust the sun position a bit, just to make these light splotches on the floor and the walls a bit bigger. Then we're gonna increase the physical size of the sun to get the shadows a bit softer, and we'll decrease the intensity of the sun, because I'd like to put a corona rectangular light on the ceiling just to push a bit more of that skylight color in. While we could have adjusted the relative intensities of all of our lights in a number of different ways, lowering the sun intensity is probably the quickest for our purposes here, so that's what we're going to be using. And that being said, let's hop on to creating a Corona light object for our ceiling light. We'll quickly adjust its position a bit, and the important thing of note here is that we're going to push the temperature of the light up to get a bit of that bluish color in. And if we look at our preview, this is pretty much where I want the light for this scene to be. So let's hop onto the fun stuff and start creating materials. While discussing the concepts and art direction for this tutorial, we were inspired by the works of famous Japanese architect Tadao Ando. And we'll be using a type of concrete on the walls which he's famous for using in his projects. The Megascans library offers a very wide range of concrete surfaces, 3D objects, imperfections and decals. And this set of assets is exactly what we need to try and capture the essence of Tadao's work. So let's open up the bridge and type in concrete and slab. The cool thing about the bridge is that you can actually preview any of the assets in 3D before you even export them. And this looks like the perfect thing we need for our scene. So let's export it, but make sure your object is selected before that so that the bridge can automatically create and assign the materials for you. 
Now, when we look at our wall, it's pretty obvious we have to sort out some UV mapping coordinates for it. While UV mapping is sometimes regarded as a bit of a tedious and painful process, I'm just going to make a quick example here and show you how easy and simple it can be. So first we're going to add a UVW unwrap modifier to our object, select all of our polygons and apply a planar map to them to weld them all together. Then we're just going to quickly relax all of them to straighten everything out, rotate everything in the proper orientation, and scale them a bit to get a feel of how our texture is going to tile on our object. I think this scale is pretty much okay. So now we have to fix our uh, joints. We're going to be selecting vertices and moving them ever so slightly to align the edges of the texture to the edges of our geometry. You'll see me zooming in the UV editor a lot, and that's because the more you zoom in, actually the more resolution you get when you're moving things around, which is pretty useful. And now that we've done this, all that we have left to do is fix the lower edge of the texture. So we're going to select everything and move it around a bit until we align the edge of the texture with the edge of our geometry again. And that's it. We have our walls unwrapped and ready to go. If we look at our preview again, I'm kind of missing a bit of uh, leaks or imperfections on these walls. So let's open up the bridge again and see what we can find. As always, just type in what you're looking for and you'll get it. I think this tileable leakage looks good, so let's use the open in folder option and we'll just drag and drop this bitmap into our material editor. Once we've done this, to combine this imperfection map with our material, first we're gonna invert this bitmap to make our leaks dark. Then we're gonna add a corona mix map, add our diffuse bitmap into the bottom slot and our imperfection map in the top slot, and then we're going to change the blending mode to multiply. If we look at our material now, we obviously need to fix the UV mapping for the imperfection texture. So we're going to add another UV map, uh, in this case, just a regular box map, let's say around three and a half or so meters, which should cover the entire height of the wall. We'll add it to channel two, and then we'll also change the channel on the bitmap itself. And now if we look at a preview, everything should be looking a bit better. Okay, that's looking good. But I think I'd like to blend these two textures in a way that it's a bit stronger at the top and not so strong at the bottom. And for this, we're going to be using a gradient ramp texture as a mask. Now we're also added to channel two and use our box mapping and rotate it a bit until we get it white to the top and black at the bottom. This is of course because uh, white is one or full blending and black is zero or no blending at all. And if we look at our preview right now, this is looking pretty much spot on. You can tell how easy it is to combine various assets from the Megascans library to get your desired look. But let's skip to the point where our material is done. Let me quickly explain what we've done here. So first of all, we increase the tiling on the leakage to two to make it a bit more narrow. We also used an output map to isolate the holes from the displacement texture and blended them with the glossiness map to make sure that the holes in the concrete have no reflection. We also made the glossiness map a bit more contrasty by using a color curve and increased its output. And we end up with a concrete that looks approximately like this. Okay, let's put our diffuse map back to visible in the viewport and start another preview. I think our walls are looking really nice at the moment, so we can focus on the floor. To counterbalance the light coming from the ceiling, perhaps, I'd like this floor to be dark. So let's open up the bridge and try typing in exactly what we're after. So dark floor. And this looks like exactly what we need. So with our floor object selected, we're going to press the export button and the material will get assigned to our floor. Now we're going to need a UV map. So let's add a box map of two by two by two meters, which is the physical size that most of the assets in the Megascan library come in. I'd also like this floor to be a bit more reflective. So in order to do that, we'll just boost the output of the materials glossiness map.
Coming back to our preview window, we can see that there's hints of reflections coming in on the floor, and I'm quite happy with that for now. So at this point, let's just skip to the part where we applied the materials to the rest of the objects in the scene. So the ceiling, the raised section of the floor, and the two benches. We're going to do that by using the exact same methods we've used so far, and also the same box mapping of 2 by 2 by 2 meters. Let's get back to our preview and leave it rendered for a while to see what we have. Okay, this is looking really nice. So the only thing I think we're missing here is a light on the underside of the stair. In order to make that, we're going to quickly isolate the stair object and we're going to draw a line along its edge. So quickly snapping along the vertices of the object, we're just going to create a renderable line, open up our material editor and add a Corona light material. And just a small note here, instead of driving the color of the light with an RGB value, I prefer to use a Corona color map and use a temperature in Kelvin instead. So coming back to the preview once more, our floor light is shining nicely and this seems to be pretty much done. Finally, let's bring up a larger preview of our render and reset our tone map settings so we can quickly go through them and see what we've done here to get the look that we wanted. We've added some highlight compression to stop parts of the image from burning out. We've also increased the contrast significantly, added some filmic shadows, which changes the tone map curve and makes everything look just a tad more dynamic. We also added a slight vignette to darken up the corners a bit, and lastly adjusted the exposure to get everything a bit brighter. Now we can apply one of the many lookup tables that come pre-installed with Corona, and lookup tables are a great and very efficient tool if you're after a specific look or you just want to try many different variants quickly. As a final touch, we're going to turn on Bloom and Glare, just to integrate our floor light a bit better with the rest of the scene. And that is it. Just like in the last tutorial, while discussing art direction for this scene, we quickly prototyped several variants which you can see here. Once again, you can tell how even the most basic of scenes can produce a dynamic, visually pleasing result in no time. The assets from the Megascans library are key to creating scenes this fast. Add in the Quixel bridge to that, and you obtain a workflow which is unparalleled in both speed and efficiency. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, and do let us know what you'd like to see covered next in the comments, and I'll see you next time.